Judah and all my kids. You guys have been doing such a good job. I was thoroughly enjoyed the puppet show, the children's story, the music. Aren't they doing a great job, everybody? For Jesus, praise God. I, I mean, we even have junior deacons here. So these are all children in the making of being servants for Jesus, right? <laughs> so um, I'm going to be using the New King James Version today. And um, you can follow along with, with whichever Bible version you have. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day, for another day of life. I invoke and invite your Holy Spirit to anoint me, Heavenly Father, and to be poured into this place, to be poured into each and every person here. Just like the day of Pentecost, Heavenly Father, we invite you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, light is essential to life. In the daytime, we have the sun. At night, we have the moon and the stars. A long time ago at night, it was very dark because they didn't have electricity. My husband, who was a Marine, was in Kuwait. And he was telling me that in the desert night, you can see the glow of light for miles and miles away. You know, Jesus says in Matthew 5.14, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. In Greek, the language that Matthew 5 was written in, the word for light is phos. And I thought that it was really interesting that in Spanish, they call uh, matches phosphoros or um, phosphoros, because the origin, the origin is phos. Well, anyway, a long time ago, during the time of Jesus, people used clay to mold into bowls with wicks and olive oil, and this would light their homes. They did this for thousands and thousands of years. They would mold these clay bowls into little lamps like this. Isn't that cute? And I just think it's, I, I like Jeremiah 18, 6, what, what God says about clay in the potter's hand. He says, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. I just love that imagery. Well, they would put these lamps on top of a stand, or they would just turn a bushel around. Bushel means basket. And they would use these bushels to put the, put, to put the lamp on, and this would be able to light their entire home. Kind of like this. So the, this is a basket, right? So they would turn it around. Those who could not afford to have a table for the lamp, they would turn it around. And they would put the lamp on just like that. Isn't that cute? Let's, let's watch a video to see how that might have worked.
in order for the lamp to shine, it needs oil. Isn't that interesting? Uh, in Matthew verse 5, 15 and 16, uh, chapter 5 verses 15 and 16, Jesus goes on to say, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. To who? To, does it give light to your friends or, or, or your husband or, or your kids? Or does it give light to all, to everybody, all who are in the house? Verse 16 says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So we are God's light. But in order for this lamp to shine, it needs oil. Does anybody know what oil represents in the Bible? The Holy Spirit. Um, in the Bible, oil was used by God's prophets to anoint someone. Anointing is smearing or rubbing someone in a, in a religious ceremony, kind of like what Samuel did with King David. In 1 Samuel uh, 16, verse 13, Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the middle of all his brothers. And this, from that time on, the, spirit, the Bible says that the Spirit of God came strongly on David. You know who else was anointed with oil? With, with the Holy Spirit? Not with oil, but with the Holy Spirit. That was Jesus our Messiah. In Luke 4.18, he preaches at his temple and says to them, the Spirit of God is on me because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So when someone was anointed with or without oil, the Spirit of God was poured into that person. The way olive oil is poured into the clay pot. So the olive oil is used as a symbol or a sign that a person is being anointed with God's Holy Spirit because the Spirit of God would come inside of them after they were smeared with this olive oil in a religious ceremony. Let me see, let me try and see if I can lap this, light, this um, lamp without the oil. I'm going to use this electric candle lighter. But in the biblical times, they used a different way. Well, let's see. They would rub two pieces of wood together, or they would use a special piece of iron with, um, with rock flint, and that would spark a fire. Let's see how long that goes. It's lighting for a little bit. That's a wick. The wick that they used was um, a linen, and they would trim. They would trim their wicks after they had after they had burned out. So I'm going to let it burn out. It's almost it's almost down. So it's lighting for a little bit, but. If you, want, if you lived back in the old days, you would want your, your light, your lamp to shine for a long time, not just for a little bit, because then it was not useful. Then you wouldn't be able to do your work. It would just, you'd have maybe a, a couple minutes and that was it. So as we're, as we're watching that, I'm going to explain to you that, you know, without oil, it doesn't work. It lights up really fast, but the light goes out because there's no oil in the lamp to make it really useful. So in order for this lamp to have the fire that brings light into the darkness, it needs oil. So what does it mean to be anointed with the Holy Spirit? What are the signs? And how does this happen? I wondered myself. God says in Acts 2.17, and it shall come to pass in the last days that I will pour out of my, I will pour out of my spirit on all flesh. Your sons 
and your daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. In the book of Matthew in the Bible, Jesus tells a parable about the last days and the importance of oil in our lamps during this time. We call it the parable of the ten virgins. Well, these ten virgins are waiting for the groom of a wedding to come. Five of the virgins were wise and they brought extra oil for for their lamps just in case the groom was late. But the foolish virgins didn't have any extra oil in their lamps. Well, the groom did end up being late, very, very late. So all 10 of them fell asleep. And I want you to sit on this for a little bit. How many of them fell asleep? All of them fell asleep. But at midnight, they heard someone crying. The groom is coming. Go out to meet him. All the virgins woke up right away and started trimming their wicks. They started trimming their wicks. This is a little teeny light, but I'm going to trim it. Okay. It's not going to work for me. (laughs) So I'm going to grab this this little wick, and I'm going to show you what it looks like. Here we go. So this is what this little wick looks like. They have thicker ones too. And it actually has a little bit of olive oil because last night we tested it. So that's why it lasted a little bit longer. Because it had it's when you put olive oil into the lamp, the wick is drenched with the olive oil. So it still lasts. But if you do this without any olive oil, it's gonna go out right away. So there is a tiny bit of olive oil in there, but I'm gonna trim this. Trim that off so that the next time we light it, it can work. Okay? And so I'll put that back in my lamp. Put the little wick back in there. And then we'll test it again. All right. All right, my hands are oily now. (laughs) Moisturizer. Okay. So yeah, all of them fell asleep, and when they heard the midnight cry, they woke up and started trimming their wicks. They asked the wise virgins for oil, but the, oil, the wise virgin said, we only have enough for ourselves. You need to go and buy some for yourself. So Jesus ended the parable by telling them that they needed to wake up to be aware and ready because no one knows the day or the hour when God is coming back to take us with him to heaven. Remember heaven? My favorite Christian author, Ellen White, says in a magazine called Signs of the Times, she talks about the virgins in this parable. In, um, in Gospel Workers, I mean, sorry, Signs of the Times, June 28, 1910, she says, they discerned where was the source of their supply and appreciated the love that God had for them. They opened their hearts. What did they do with their hearts? They opened their hearts to receive the Holy Spirit by which the love of God was shed abroad in their hearts. Their lights were trimmed and burning and sent forth steady rays into the moral darkness of the world. They glorified God because they had the oil of grace in their hearts and did the very work that their master did before them, went forth to seek and to save those who were lost. Oh, Jesus. Jojo, is Jojo here? Jojo, come on up. I want you to pour oil into my little lamp for me. Go ahead, pour pour some oil into there. The oil represents the Holy Spirit being poured into us. Go ahead, pour a little bit more. 
The oil represents the Holy Spirit being poured into us. That's okay. Don't worry about it. That's fine. Thank you, Jip. Thank you, Jojo. So, Jojo, I'm going to ask you, what, what, uh, how did that, that lamp get oil into it? I poured it. You poured it. Good job. That's right. So, Luke 11, 13, Dr. Luke says that our Heavenly Father will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him for it. So, um, Jojo poured this. And who, who pours the Holy Spirit into us? Who do you think pours the Holy Spirit into us? God. Yes. Daddy God himself. That's what I like to call our Heavenly Father. So, how does the Bible tell us that we can have the Holy Spirit? Do you guys remember? remember? Do you guys remember? <laughs> how... How can we have the Holy Spirit? What do we need to do? What do, we, do you remember, Jojo? Let me read it. I'm going to read it, and then you guys can answer. If you then, being evil, Luke 11, 13, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Yes. So who is it that pours the Holy Spirit again into us if we ask him? our Heavenly Father. You can go to your seat now, JJ. Thank you so much. You did good. <laughs> Yay! Thank you, Jojo. Let's give him a hand. And the Bible says that so many things start to happen inside of you when you ask for the Holy Spirit. I like what Galatians 5 verses 22 and 23 says that the says what happens. These are the fruits of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Now, I, I want to ask you something. Would you want to be around someone like that? Uh, yeah. Would you say they're letting their light shine so people are drawn to them and glorifying their Father in heaven? Yep. You know what? I'm a sinful human, and I have some really weak moments sometimes. I'm definitely not loving, joyful, peaceful, patient, kind, good, faithful, and gentle all the time. I even lose my temper sometimes, my temper sometimes, and I feel really, really bad because I want to do what's right, but sometimes my emotions get in the way. It could be sadness, and I get grouchy or impatient, and on my own, it's really, really hard to be all these things to all people. So, you know, I'm going to tell you something. In Bible times, people use clay lamps like this one to light their homes. And I would like to ask God to mold us into something beautiful like a potter did with that lamp right there. I'm going to need Kayla to come up. Kayla, come up and hold my clay lamp for me. Thank you, Kyla. Okay, Kyla, can you walk to that chair and then back to me? All right, Kyla, you did a great job. But if all the lights were off and there was no electricity, would you be able to see? No. no. Well, right now it's light outside, but if it was nighttime and we lost electricity, it was completely dark, there's no fire. There's oil in the lamp, but there's no fire, so she can't really see where she's going. So um, I'm going to ask the AV team to please turn off all the lights, just so we can get a little bit of an imagery. <laughs> okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to light, light the little lamp now, just so you can have a little taste of what, what it might be like. Okay, why don't you turn it around so it's not facing you? Out. 
that one. Let's drench it in the oil. Come on, Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to put a new... This needs to be drenched in oil. We got it in the oil. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. There we go. All right, Kyla, now I want you to go to the chair and back. Isn't that beautiful? You know, in the Psalms, King David says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I'm going to give you a Bible now, Kyla. We're going to put this here and we're going to leave it here to remind us. Okay, Kyla. All right, go ahead, walk over there and then come back. You know, Kyla, this Bible is going to be a lamp to your feet and light into your path. It's going to guide you to where you need to go to help you in times when you don't know what to do so that you don't fall. All right. Thank you, Kyla. Thank you for coming up to help me. <laughs> you know, there's a beautiful... Thank you, Ibrahim. <laughs> <laughs> There's a beautiful growth happening inside of you when you learn the Bible because you're being filled with the words of God's Holy Spirit. But the Bible says that when the love of Jesus and the Holy Spirit work together, there's a spark that happens. In John 8, 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. You know, a long time ago, I was going through something really sad. I was so sad that I started wondering if God was really there with me. So I decided to stop going to church and stop reading the Bible. I felt really happy and kind of excited for a very short time. Then I just got super sad, and I became lost. I felt lost in my sadness. And I couldn't, I couldn't seem to find my way back. Has anyone, ever, has anyone here ever felt lost? Has anyone, have any children here ever been lost at a store maybe? That can be really scary, can it? What about parents? Oh yeah, thank you. You can turn the lights on now. What about you parents? Have you guys ever lost your kids? No, I can't even imagine how scary that would be. You know, um, so I was lost, and my mom suggested that I attend the Seventh-day Adventist College in Puerto Rico. And I thought, great, I was excited about it because, you know, beaches, good food, and it, it, I couldn't wait to go. But when I got to school, I was a bit upset because they had so many rules. And can you imagine a university having rules? I, and I couldn't do whatever I wanted. Anyway, this made me angry, so I started breaking the rules until one day I was asked to leave the dorm. <laughs> so uh, my mom and family weren't very happy about that. I, I was a little bit, but them not so much. And um, some of them strongly suggested in the traditional Latino way that I should act better than that, no better. 
I moved into a tiny apartment off the college campus, and almost every weekend, I started to visit my cousin Nancy and our family. I looked forward to those visits. I would always go to church, but instead of paying attention, I would daydream about what I was going to do when church was finished. So one Sabbath, I mentioned my daydreaming to my cousin Nancy, and she surprised me. She kind of giggled, and she said, Mamita, church is not the place for perfect people. And basically, to summarize what she said, she, she, she suggested that I spend time with God every day and get to know him. And I took her advice. I woke up every morning, prayed, and started reading the Bible, even though at times, to tell you the truth, I thought it was very boring. But I didn't give up until one day I started feeling a little bit happier. And then I started falling in love with this person of Jesus. And a little happier and a little happier till one day that spark happened. I had this fire inside of me. That's when the fire of God's Holy Spirit started to burn inside of my heart. And I'm going to tell you something. I'm a work in progress. Sometimes my light gets dim. And sometimes it shines brightly. Like everyone else, I have good days and I have bad days. But I'm learning. In my bad days, I got to get down on my knees and just cry. And, and, and read the word and eat it like I've, ha- I've never have before. And that's what I've been doing. And it works for me. A famous Baptist preacher named Charles Spurgeon once said, The Bible is not the light of the world. It is the light of the church. But the world does not read the Bible. The world reads Christians. You are the light of the world. And my favorite Christian author, Ellen G. White, writes, A kind, courteous Christian is the most powerful argument that can, be, that can be produced in favor of Christianity. She says that in Gospel Workers. Who here, who here is tired of trying to do the right thing on their own? Yeah. Who wants to ask God to put the fire of his Holy Spirit inside of you so you can let your light shine before all people, so they can see your good works, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control, all that, and glorify who? Your Father who is in heaven. I'm going to tell you something. It's not always going to be easy. You will be tempted. Oh, yeah. But do you prefer God helping you, or do you want to just figure it out on your own? Because I'm pretty sure it's going to be easier with Jesus. Whoever here is ready to make the decision to give your life to God today, I'm sorry, I'm feeling the Spirit. No matter how little you are, please come up here so we can pray for you. If you're too embarrassed to come up, just raise your hand and invite God into your heart. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you so much for dying on the cross for us, for loving us, for filling us with your love, and for seeing for seeing beauty in us when no one else did, Heavenly Father, for giving us the light for giving us the Holy Spirit for working with us. I pray for each and every person that's here today, Heavenly Father, that you anoint them with your Holy Spirit so that they can let their light shine, so that they can have that love that you, that understanding of that love that you have for them. And that love can just overflow. That oil of the Holy Spirit can just overflow onto others, Heavenly Father. I know there's people who are hurting here today, and they just can't. They feel like they just can't, Lord, anymore. 
They're going through the motions, Lord. Be with them. Fill them with your Holy Ghost. Fill us all, Heavenly Father. We're all going through something at some point in our life. We need to be understanding of each other and not judge each other and just, just understand that person is having a bad day. Or maybe you know that person has gone through something that just devastating that you don't know about because you don't know them well enough. Heavenly Father, have mercy on us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.